spot. At first this photo just looks like a silly good time between two boys, but what happens next is when it gets kind of crazy. The two in the photo are brothers, Michael and Sean McQuilkin, and it is from August 20th, 1975, when they were at Morro Rock in Sequoia National Park in California. The photo was taken by their sister Mary after they all thought that their hair standing up was absolutely hilarious and decided to snap a few photos to remember the moment. Well, they surely will never forget it because just a few moments after after this photo was taken, they were actually struck by lightning. One of the brothers said that he raised his hand into the air and that the ring he had on was buzzing, and then suddenly they were all on the ground and smoke was pouring out of Sean's back. The good news is that they all survived the lightning that day, but I bet it certainly wasn't the day that they had planned. In our number 8 spot today we have Bikini Island. Bikini in the Marshall Islands was once inhabited by around 170 islanders until 1945 rolled around. The US President at the time, Harry Truman, ordered that the military continue to test nuclear weapons just in case they were needed in the future, since this was just shortly after the end of World War II. Unfortunately, Bikini was the place that was chosen to be the testing site, since all planes and ships traveled on routes that weren't close to the area. The residents of the island were asked to vacate, quote, for the good of mankind and to end all world wars, to which they of course oblige, under the impression that they would one day be able to move back. Test weapons were detonated on the reef itself, on the sea, in the air, and underwater, and this this photo shows what was happening during just one of those tests, and it wasn't even the largest one. Although the former residents of Bikini were promised that they would one day be able to return home, the island still remains uninhabited because of the mass amounts of radiation that still exists there. In our number 8 spot today we have this huge grasshopper. This photo is allegedly undoctored, or at least that's what people once believed, but as it turns out, this photo actually comes from a line of joke postcards, thank god. Apparently it was a hilarious hit back in the day to create postcards depicting a super ungodly large kind of grasshopper. Like the kind that would make me line up first for a trip to Mars if I saw one hopping around here on Earth. Or should I say, leaping. Like for a second, just imagine. With how high regular tiny grasshoppers can jump, this thing would be jumping into the clouds for sure. Also like, what would it eat? No thank you to large bugs, especially ones that can jump. I'm just so glad that this one turned out to be fake. Even though it's fake, I wish this was still one that they withheld from the public. In our number 7 spot today we have these prohibition barrels. The prohibition was the outlaw of the consumption of alcohol, which was done with a ban being placed on the production, importation, transportation, and sale of alcohol by the US government from 1920 to 1933. This ban certainly did not stop people from producing or consuming alcohol, it was just done in sneakier ways. The black market for alcohol was booming as people began to drink redistilled industrial alcohol instead. This photo shows how big the black market industry for alcohol was, as it shows a massive stack of liquor barrels that were collected by the authorities in 1924 about to be set ablaze. The people look so tiny standing next to this insane amount of alcohol. While the prohibition is generally regarded as a failure, the biggest failure it caused was the unintended organized crime it put into life in America. In our number 6 spot today we have this neighborhood nuclear test. This photo shows a mother and her young son looking out the window and witnessing a nuclear test explosion from the comfort of their own home in 1953. Like, what? Imagine seeing that from your window now in 2021. People would be going wild! Of course any kind of nuclear test should be done as far away from where people live as possible. I know it's not like the test was being done in their front yard or anything, but still, I certainly wouldn't be comfortable with them testing a nuclear bomb anywhere near the place I live. This photo was of course taken before the effects of nuclear radiation from these kind of explosions were publicly understood. Actually, people have suggested that the public knowledge of these kinds of side effects were suppressed during this time in order to avoid controversy about them testing these kinds of weapons in your neighborhood. While that would of course be something insane to witness firsthand, thankfully the now widely known health risks associated with this sort of thing has caused this to not be a common occurrence. In our number 5 spot today we have the Boston Marathon. This photo comes to us from 1967 and it depicts the struggles that Catherine Switzer went through in order to be the first female to finish the Boston Marathon. This photo shows race organizers as well as other participants 
participants trying to stop her from running the marathon that she trained for and was more than capable of completing. She has written a book that explains in great detail all the things she went through that day and how the critiques and opinions about a woman running the race started even before she had registered to run. People in our history like Catherine are incredibly important, as well as photos like these, because they show when people were literally trying to drag her down, she just kept on running. In our number 4 spot today we have a traffic jam. On Sunday, September 3rd, 1967, Sweden changed from driving on the left hand side of the road to driving on the right hand side of the road. Why? Well, I'm not exactly sure considering people downvoted the idea before it was implemented and it cost a ton of money to make the switch. Not to mention it's also super confusing for basically everyone and when we're talking about driving, the simpler the better. Traffic lights had to be reversed, road signs changed, intersections redesigned, lines on the roads repainted, buses modified, and bus stops moved. What happened when the change was implemented? Well, that's what this photo will show you. Absolute chaos. However, after the initial shock, things did start to get better as because drivers were much more cautious in the time following the switch, the number of traffic accidents actually dropped for a little while before inevitably rising again. Was the switch worth it? Well, no one is sure about that, but what are they gonna do? Change it back. In our number three spot today, we have the three Jacksons. On August 21st, 1934, three fearless acrobats known as the three Jacksons, Charlie Smith, Jewel Waddock, and Jimmy Kerrigan, all performed a routine on the edge of the Empire State Building, which is when this photo was captured. It is said that these three toured as an acrobatic trio, and this stunt the photo captured was done at 1,245 feet. According to officials from the Empire State Building, it is said that this was the first time the stunt was attempted, and to this day, it has never been done again, which makes a lot of sense. While this photo is absolutely incredible and is such a testament not only to the trust they shared, but also their abilities as acrobats, I don't know who in their right mind would try to recreate this. We already have one, and I think we can just all be happy with that. In our number two spot today, we have the man who fell from space. Vladimir Komarov was a cosmonaut, Soviet test pilot, and aerospace engineer. He was one of the most highly experienced and qualified people, which is exactly why he was chosen for some of the very first space missions. He became the first Soviet cosmonaut to fly into space twice. Unfortunately, however, on one of these missions, things went seriously awry. A parachute failure caused his capsule to crash into the ground after re-entry on the 24th of April in 1967. He literally fell from space, and regardless of if you know anything about space and re-entry, that would have been absolutely terrifying and awful. He of course didn't make it, but the entire process left his remains almost unrecognizable. This photo shows his colleagues looking onto his remains before he was laid to rest. The contributions of people like Vladimir have allowed us to go further into space and understand more than we ever could have imagined. In our number one spot today, we have the gadget. This photo shows the first ever atomic bomb, and it comes to us from 1945. Called the gadget, this bomb was an implosion plutonium device that was detonated in the Trinity test in 1945. This photo shows someone sitting next to it, so casually, like it's a PB&J sandwich and not this world changing device. The Trinity test was the very first time a nuclear weapon was detonated and the gadget was actually the same design as the bomb that was later detonated over Nagasaki, Japan on August 9th, 1945. There is such an eerie nature about this photo and the seemingly casual behavior of the man next to it. Did he know what this was about to unleash? Perhaps, but maybe not. Number 10. Go Pills. Introducing Go Pills, the pill that keeps you up for 40 hours straight. What could possibly go wrong? When the government tried creating these new pills, the right idea was in mind. Or so we think. Overnight workers, military, maybe you need to cram three days of studying in in one night. You name it. The US Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, or DARPA, was supposed to have your back. What happened? The Air Force has around 100 fatal crashes on record because of fatigued pilots. So US military was actively trying to create a solution for these physically demanding jobs. The closest that we have now to these go pills are something called modafinil, which is a narcotic approved by the Air Force to combat said fatigue, but it's not public yet, of course, obviously. Do you think these government go pills will ever make it to the public? I mean, I think coffee makes people crazy enough in the mornings. I'm all set personally. I'm on like coffee number four. I'm jazzed up right now. In our number nine spot today, we have the frozen man of Mount Everest. This photo comes from 1996 and it shows Beck Weathers getting treated after the Mount Everest disaster. The Mount Everest disaster took place on May 10th and 11th in 1996, where there was a blizzard on the mountain that ended up stranding and taking the lives of eight 
eight people who were aiming to descend the mountain. Beck was a part of the team who was climbing the mountain on this fateful day and he ended up suffering from snow blindness during the climb. He actually fell into a hypothermic coma because it was so cold and he suffered severe frostbite on his face, hands and feet. Pretty miraculously he not only survived but ended up walking back down to camp in order to get help where he was then taken by helicopter to receive treatment. He ended up needing his hands, parts of his feet and even his nose amputated but he survived this whole ordeal and that is the most important thing. In our number 8 spot today we have the reflecting pool. This is one of the creepiest or most chilling images ever taken. It depicts a young girl in a graveyard who is looking down at a reflection in a pond. Ok, maybe a little eerie but not exactly chilling. What makes this photo what it is however is that there are seemingly two reflections looking back up at this little girl. No one knows who this girl is, where she is or even when this photo was taken but it is estimated to have come from somewhere around the early 1900s. This photo was analyzed and it has been said that it is unaltered or edited. Who knows how this photo was possible? Maybe there was some sort of invisible entity standing beside her that we could only see the reflection of? Like a reverse vampire or something. In our number 7 spot today we have the elephant's foot. This photo looks like it's just a big lump of nothing but it is called an elephant's foot. No, it's of course not a real elephant's foot and instead is just called that because of its appearance. This lump was actually created from the Chernobyl nuclear meltdown and it is just a mass of corium and other materials that were in the core of the reactor. This elephant's foot was located in the steam distribution corridor which is under what's left of the reactor. While this mass doesn't produce as much radiation as it did before, it it does still produce a deadly amount even today. Like so much so that just a few minutes of being around it is enough to get a lethal dose of radiation. It's kind of crazy that even though they knew this, they were still standing there taking pictures of it. For a long time the severity of the Chernobyl nuclear disaster was being kept a secret from the public and those who it mattered to the most. Photos like these only give us a glimpse into this horrible disaster and how things went down. In our number 6 spot today we have the penitentiary. This photo comes from what is left of the Eastern State Penitentiary in Pennsylvania. This prison used to be the most famous and the most expensive in the world but now this is the sort of thing that is left of it. This prison is actually now used as a tourist attraction and it becomes a haunted house during Halloween. The prison used to house some pretty high profile prisoners such as Scarface himself, Al Capone. The prison was opened in 1829 and was known for its advanced technology for the time. They had things like central heating, flush toilets and shower baths in each cell. These were all considered luxuries in 1829. The first prisoner to be held there was Charles Williams who was facing a two year sentence for theft. When he arrived at the prison he had a hood over his head so as to protect his identity but also so that he wouldn't know what the rest of the prison looked like so he would never be able to plan an escape. While prison is never good, the craziest thing about this specific one is that all of the prisoners lived in isolation. I can't even imagine what that would be like, especially for the people who found themselves there for a long period of time. This photo is just a truly haunting reminder of all that once went on in this prison. In our number 5 spot today we have the Stanford Prison Experiment. This photo comes from 1971 during the Stanford Prison Experiment. For those of you who aren't familiar with this experiment, it started on August 14th 1971 and was led by university psychology professor Philip Zimbardo. The experiment took student volunteers and divided them into two groups, one group of prisoners and one group of guards and they placed all of the volunteers into a fake prison that was created for this experiment. Experiment. The experiment aimed to see if and how quickly humans would turn evil under the right conditions with the right amount of power. Basically it was a test to try and answer the question of if humans are inherently good or inherently evil. I think everyone was pretty shocked with the results. After just 6 days the experiment needed to be concluded because the guards began absolutely tormenting the prisoners. It really showed the kinds of things humans can be capable of even after a short time. This photo is definitely reminiscent of that experiment and it serves as our reminder. In our number 4 spot today we have the acid drum. This photo comes to us from the inside of a house of one of the most terrible people, the serial killer Jeffrey Dahmer. This photo was taken from the inside of his home after he was found and caught by authorities. Before his arrest he was sadly able to take the lives of 17 people. Although this photo might look kind of plain, the horrors are plentiful. This shot shows a full drum of acid that was located inside of his home. I probably don't need to tell you what it was used for because who has a full drum of acid inside of their home? 
especially when you're a serial killer. I can't imagine the horrors investigators saw when they entered his home, and even previous to that as they investigated his crimes. Thankfully, Jeffrey was caught, and in 1992, he was sentenced to life in prison, but just two years later, he was killed by a fellow prison inmate. In our number three spot today, we have the gadget. This photo shows the first ever atomic bomb, and it comes to us from 1945. Called the gadget, this bomb was an implosion plutonium device that was detonated in the Trinity test in 1945. This photo shows someone sitting next to it, so casually, like it's a stuffed animal and not like it's a world changing device. The Trinity test was the very first time a nuclear weapon was detonated, and the gadget was actually of the same design as the bomb that was later detonated over Nagasaki. Japan on August 9th, 1945. There is a very eerie nature about this photo and the seemingly casual behavior of the man next to it. Did he know what this was about to unleash? Perhaps not, but more eerily, maybe he did. In our number two spot today, we have Change. This photo was taken by Fred Blackwell on May 28th, 1963, and is actually showing us a moment of protest. The three sitting at the counter are Joan Trompour, Anne Moody, and their sociology teacher, John Salter. The reason why this photo is so important is because these three are sitting at a quote, white only counter at Woolworth's Five and Dime store in Jackson, Mississippi, while being attacked by an angry mob. People are throwing condiments at them, and I'm sure saying some pretty nasty things. Things. The two students went to Tougaloo College, which was a black college that ended up being at the core of the civil rights movement in Mississippi. It's amazing to see how brave they are, and a photo like this is really such an important message for us to remember today. In our number one spot today, we have Bikini Island. Bikini in the Marshall Islands was once inhabited by around 170 islanders until 1945 rolled around. The US president at the time, Harry Truman, ordered that the military continue to test nuclear weapons just in case they were needed in the future since this was shortly after the end of World War II. Unfortunately, Bikini was the place that was chosen to be the testing site since all planes and ships traveled on routes that weren't close to the area. The residents of the island were asked to vacate, quote, for the good of mankind and to end all world wars, to which they of course obliged under the impression that they would one day be able to move back. Test weapons were detonated on the reef itself, on the sea, in the air, and underwater, and this photo shows what was happening during just one of these tests and it wasn't even the largest one. Although the former residents of Bikini were promised that they would one day be able to return home, the island still remains uninhabited because of the mass amounts of radiation that still exist here. Starting off this countdown, we have Jeffrey Bezos. In 2019, the founder of Amazon, Jeff Bezos, admitted that his nudes almost got leaked. Basically, someone got a hold of some steamy text messages and nudes that he sent to his girlfriend, and they tried to blackmail him with it. But but before they could do so, he came out and admitted what he had done. And he described it in detail. One of his texts said, and I quote, I love you alive, girl. I will show you with my body and my lips and my eyes very soon. Now, any person, celebrity, billionaire or not, probably doesn't want their nudes getting leaked. On top of that, Jeff was married at the time that this information came out, so it looked pretty bad on him. But he claims that he was separated from his wife before dating his new lady. Either way, Bezos didn't want us to see that side of him. And frankly, I don't want to either. Number nine, the heart attack gun. Sounds like a pretty calm weapon right there. The CIA had this weapon, and it was more of a dart gun than anything, but you know, heart attack gun sounds pretty on the nose for this list. It shot a frozen dart filled with a specific toxin that, you guessed it, gave you a heart attack. Pretty James Bond, right? It was frozen so that the dart would ideally melt away after it's done its damage. You know, destroying all the evidence, right? It's like some icicle killer stuff right there. That's some that's some next level. There we go. Took me 17 <laughs> seconds to remember what an icicle was called. I was like, what are those long drippy frozen things? The icicles. The CIA was really into poisons during the Cold War and apparently darts. Match made in heaven. The public caught wind of all this thanks to Senator Frank Church, and when Congress decided to look into where these tax dollars were going, they found a plethora of illegal methods used by not only the CIA, but also the NSA and the FBI and the IRS. A lot of letters coming in, a lot of, a lot of sketchy letters. Frozen darts, that's insane. That's a confusing way to go out. You'd have no idea what happened. You'd be like, ugh, burr, ow. Like, it'd be that fast, that's crazy. Number eight. Project Iceworm. Ooh, speaking of cold, here we go. Back in the 1960s, under the Greenland ice sheet, the US Army started to build a mobile nuclear missile launch site, okay? It was codenamed Project Iceworm. It's a pretty fun name because it's cold and underground. 
We get it, right? Nice. The idea was that they would build the station close enough so that they could hit targets within the Soviet Union, all secretly, right? That was the whole idea. This project was called Project Iceworm, but there was another project called Camp Century that had to be done first. This is the top secret, sketchy stuff. Can't just hit the road with a few shovels, you gotta make sure it's livable first. Camp Century was a network of underground tunnels and places for workers to hang out, like a kitchen, a hall, supply rooms, communication center, all stuff like that. It was a supply camp. You know, whatever you imagine, it was that. There was also a nuclear power plant. That's the most important part to keep everything active, right? This was kept from the Danish government for seven years. A secret nuclear power plant for seven years. Yeah, we don't like those. But in 1966, the project was canceled because of shifting ice. Or at least that's what they say. No, it's definitely shifting ice. The whole place is melted by now. Number seven, leaked voters. Back in December 2015, personal information from 191 million voters was leaked to the public online. It happened very fast. This feels like yesterday. I remember this happening online. I was actually quite worried about it. Researcher Chris Vickery found this data while conducting a security investigation. See, Forbes had described Vickery as, well, dare I say, a good hacker, for lack of a better word. They're called white hat hackers. They find weak spots in security without sabotaging or exploiting them. You know, they're not villains. They're just like, oh, Check this file, gotcha. They're nice, that's key, we need that. That's the difference. 79% of those eligible to vote were the victims in this leak. All their names, addresses, birth date, phone numbers, emails, even photos, you name it. Things you don't want people knowing, let alone third parties online. It's now out there. We're still unsure who was behind this entire leak, so that's comforting to go to sleep to, knowing. CSO Online and databreaches.net suggest that the information more than likely came from a software provider called Nation Builder. But CEO Jim Gilliam announced that that was not the case and they did not create the database. He said, nope, false. Although he conceded that it is still possible that some of the information that it contains may have come from data that they make available for free to campaigns. So a third party took what they could and really ran with it. It wasn't them, it was just their weak security. Nice, we love that. Just my photo, just in someone's Google Doc. I'm like, awesome. I don't want anything out there. I don't want my Google search history out there. That sounds suspicious. Number six, the Space Cube. In honor of Jordan Peele's new space movie coming out called Nope, we have to include some alien cover-ups in this government list. Not too long ago, this spinning cube-looking drone hopefully drone, was spotted over Missouri, and then only a couple hours later, it was seen again 700 miles away. That's a pretty far distance, that's a fast travel time. What's your secret? 44-year-old Matthew Jandeka was minding his own business, hanging out on the porch, when this caught his attention. It was a sunny day, so the light reflected off the cube and it caught his eye. But then a day later, another guy, 30-year-old Justin Johnson, he saw the same exact thing in the sky. He saw it while he was driving home. The light and the reflection, same thing, caught his eye. At first, I thought maybe it was a balloon, but the movements were odd, he said. Well, it sounds like whatever this thing is, military aircraft, drone, whatever the case, it's pretty fast. Maybe they're filming Top Gun 3, who knows? No spoilers. Number five, Surtsey Island. Some islands are forbidden, like Heard Island. They're home to animals and wildlife that the government refuses to let humans be part of, which is sketchy in its own way. A lot of Jurassic Park vibes over there. But when it comes to Surtsey Island near Iceland, again, always Iceland, hiding secret government projects, well, Surtsey Island is a brand new island. We love it. Literally, this island formed from a volcanic eruption back in 1963, so scientists are using this fresh face of Earth to study what it looks like to not have humans in the picture for a change. Yeah, we have seed vaults, a forbidden island. These projects make people uneasy. Hence why the government tries to keep them low key. That is until I come out and then loudly announce it and then tell you to hit that like button. Awesome. Number four, WikiLeaks war log. Companies have to live somewhere, right? We're a film studio in Toronto, we're a place we're not just a bunker, right? We're like an establishment, there's windows, we have a fridge, lots of coffee, we're okay. But where do places like WikiLeaks work? It's probably a sketchy establishment. It's probably nothing like Google, you know what I'm saying? Not a lot of beanbag chairs going on at WikiLeaks. Probably just one chair that everyone shares. Just one guy, it's literally just one guy. Today, it's a facility owned by Swedish internet provider Banhoff. This is where they keep servers for WikiLeaks. Julian Assange was the front runner for this whole operation, so. Literally, like I said, it was one guy. His hard drive is stored in this bunker behind a two foot steel door accompanied by numerous backup generators. So you're not getting in, pal. In October 2010, WikiLeaks actually published Army Field Reports from 2004. It's now one of the biggest leaks in US history. This report confirmed that there were over 66,000 civilian deaths in the Iraqi war logs out of the 109,000 in total. This leak also suggested that some American troops were classifying civilians as enemies in their statistics. Yeah, which is not great. That's, that's a borderline 
That's a big leak. These numbers were from 2004 to 2009 alone. Yeah, it's hard stuff. Number three, military weapons. Getting into the alien stuff, here we go. Psychoelectronic weapons. Yeah, apparently we're in a DC comic now. We have ice darts, ice rays, what's going on here? The first time Curtis Waltman heard of these military psychoelectronic weapons was when he received documents via Yahoo. Of all the places to get documents, you're like, oh. This is 10 years old. Originally, he had filed a Freedom of Information Act request to Washington State Fusion Center. He was trying to find out more on the clashes between Antifa and the far right. But instead, he got a response and it was all about experimental weapons. He's like, this is not what I asked for. What is this? Open. The guy gets a zip file back in return and it's called EM Effects on Human Body. Uh, how do you not open that, right? And that's exactly what he did. He opened this file because, of course, and in it he saw diagrams on these weapons and the effects that they have on people. Muscle quaking, body pain, just shivering, just your body shuts down, it's horrible. One of the effects allowed users to control their dreams, so it's not all bad, it's just kind of not right, unethical. This was clearly sent by a mistake. Nobody should ever know about any of these weapons, these super dream weapons. I don't even know what's going on there. The only emails I get are from student loans. Those ones are not a mistake. Those ones I, I will keep deleting. Number two, inner armor. Not to be confused with your inner ninja. It's also pretty mighty. We've all wanted to be a superhero at some point. Okay, I'm always late. I would love super speed any day. That'd be great. Well, DARPA's inner armor project almost made a dream come true. It was the Pentagon's way of creating super soldiers. Yeah, like Iron Man. They were literally working on this. Scientists use animals as a reference for these new abilities, literally like from a Marvel movie. They're studying the DNA of the stellar sea lion because it can reduce blood flow away from organs if need be in order to reduce oxygen demand. So now we're studying that to try and make I don't know, people like Atlanteans? Where are we going here? That would be sweet, just Aquaman with a tactical vest and a spear. Okay, that's, sure. Dr. Michael Callahan, who was in charge of running the operation, he says the goal was to make soldiers kill-proof against disease, chemical weapons, radioactive weapons, harsh weather conditions, you name it, all that good stuff. Pretty much invincible. Now, this was back in 2007, and of course in 2014, Barack Obama announced that the United States was still building Iron Man, so maybe they're close. Maybe they haven't done it yet, who knows. Honestly, I'm seeing videos every day of like these guys on hoverboards whipping down New York. We're so close to the Green Goblin in real life. We're fucked. Or like the water pier guy, he like uses the water to float. That's like two villains. It's two villains right there in real life. And finally, number one, MK Ultra. We have to finish with a mind control project. It's the only way, of course. MK Ultra was a secret CIA project that lasted from 1953 to 1973. It's a long time. They ran hundreds of experiments to US citizens. They gave them illicit substances and other narcotics, just horrible stuff, all in attempts to crack mind control. Or as they call it, information gathering. Mind control, it's definitely mind control. In the 50s and 60s, around the Cold War, the United States believed that the Soviets, Chinese, and or North Korean agents were all using mind control in the war. I mean, how else could you explain brainwashed prisoners of war in Korea, right? Nothing to do with what they're doing to them. Sure. The program had subjects take LSD, hallucinogens, paralytics, electric shock therapy, horrible stuff, just being put through the absolute worst, all in places like universities or hospitals or even prisons, right? You have no idea this stuff's happening. The happenings of these projects weren't fully known to the public until years after it ended. But the agency destroyed most MK documents back in 1973 when the whistle was blown. So we think we know, but in reality, we only know little to what happened during MK Ultra. Starting off this countdown, we have the secret entrances. Just last year, a man claimed to have found three hidden entrances that lead to Area 51. He discovered this after using Google Earth. He compared images of the base from different time periods. In one particular area in 1998, there seems to be no roads or entrance. Satellite pictures of that same location in 2005, 2010, and 2013 show a road and a dead end with what looks like an entrance and tunnel carved into a mountain. In fact, at the dead end, there appears to be cars parked there. Seems unusual for people to just park there, because what is around for them to do? Wander the barren plain alone? No, they're parking their cars there and then entering Area 51 through this secret entrance. 
in our number 9 spot. This photo was taken by David Seymour in 1948. This photo was taken in Warsaw and the child in the photo is named Terezka who is in a home for emotionally disturbed children after being raised in a concentration camp. The drawing on the blackboard is what she drew when the children were asked to draw home. While it is obviously common for children to have indistinguishable drawings, her backstory and the look in her eyes really tell a story. I hope she was able to grow and overcome some of the horrible things that she had been put through. I really wish I could know exactly what she was trying to draw and depict. In our number 8 spot, this is a photo from 1991 and is of Rajiv Gandhi who is the 6th Prime Minister of India. He took office after his mother had been assassinated and was the youngest Prime Minister at only 40 years old. This photo was taken by a 21 year old local photographer named Haribabu, but little did everyone know, this would be the last photo he took and the last photo ever taken of Rajiv. Moments after this photo was taken, the woman in the bottom left corner with the orange flowers in her hair approached Rajiv and when she bent down to touch his feet, she detonated a belt of explosives that she had on under her dress. This explosion ended up killing them all and around 13 other people. Haribabu's camera ended up staying in throughout the blast and this is how we were able to retrieve this photo. Coming in at number 7. This photo carries quite the backstory. This photo is of Violet Spears who was born in Elgin, Scotland in 1839. She was married at 15 and by the time she was 22 she had 4 children. At 33, her husband ended up passing away due to a hunting accident and Violet then packed up her and the kids and went to her sisters where they all remained for 2 years. After these 2 years, Violet just disappeared from her sisters, leaving all of her children behind. No one heard from her for a year after she left, but money began to be sent to them monthly. In 1876, a medium and hypnotist named Madame Violet began to gain popularity in Edinburgh. She had a small following at the time that she she called her hive. Slowly her seances began to get more elaborate and outrageous and she slowly began to ask clients to donate small bits of blood saying that it helped her connect to the spirits. She would actually drink the blood given to her and she has been quoted saying that this element returned to me had been missing my whole life. Eventually her hive grew and they all ended up living together and would only come out at night. They would attract and convince men and women, usually with the help of drugs and alcohol, to donate a bit of blood and most often would convince these people to leave their lives to come and join the hive. The hive continued to grow for the coming decade but when the son of a prominent councilman joined the hive and ended up developing an infection from the bloodletting and actually died, the hive was condemned and they ended up being disbanded. Madame Violet ended up living until 1930 where she died at the age of 90. In our number 6 spot, this photo comes from what is left of the Eastern State Penitentiary in Pennsylvania. This prison used to be the most famous and the most expensive in the world but now this is the sort of thing that is left of it. This prison is actually now used as a tourist attraction and it becomes a haunted house during Halloween. The prison used to house some pretty high profile prisoners such as Scarface himself, Al Capone. The prison was opened in 1829 and was known for its advanced technology for the time. Things like central heating, flush toilets and shower baths in each cell. These were all considered luxuries in 1829. The first prisoner to be held there was Charles Williams who was facing a two year sentence for theft. When he arrived at the prison he had a hood over his head so as to protect his identity but also so that he wouldn't know what the rest of the prison looked like so he would be unable to plan an escape. While prison is never good, the craziest thing about this specific one is that all the prisoners lived in isolation. I can't even imagine what that would be like, especially for the people who found themselves in there for long periods of time. Number 5 this photo is a series of self portraits by the artist William Utter Mullen. In 1995 William was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease which is an incredibly difficult thing to have to go through. William's self portraits obviously reflect a lot of what was going on in his mind during some of the last years of his life. Part of what Alzheimer's does is that it affects the part of the brain that we use for visualizing things which is part of the reasons why the paintings began to get so different from the original. This series of paintings is actually sometimes used as a study material for medical students because it does such a wonderful job at portraying something that a person without Alzheimer's wouldn't be able to understand. I think William left the world with something very sad but also beautiful, poignant and important. 
Number 4. This photo comes from the 19th century from the third plague pandemic. This was the first time that the plague had spread to all five continents. While we now know something about what that might have been like, what we haven't had to endure are doctors that are dressed like this. This is a photo of the outfits and masks that plague doctors wore when they would come to your house to treat or diagnose you. The long beak-like noses of the masks are very creepy, but they were used to hold herbs and other nicely scented things because they believed that this would help ward off the bad air, which at the time is what they thought was causing the sickness. The COVID-19 pandemic has been bad enough, so I'm very glad that our doctors and nurses can stick to their scrubs and regular masks. There's something about these outfits that just make it seem like something bad is about to happen. Number 3. This photo looks like a big lump of nothing, but it is called an elephant's foot. Don't worry, at first I was worried, but it has nothing to do with elephants and is only named that because of its appearance. This lump was actually created from the Chernobyl nuclear meltdown and is just a mass of corium and other materials that were in the core of the reactor. This elephant's foot was located in the steam distribution corridor, which is under what's left of the reactor. While this mass doesn't produce as much radiation as it did before, it does still produce a deadly amount, but it is said that if you stood in front of it for just 300 seconds, that would be enough to get a lethal dose of radiation. It's kind of crazy that even though they knew this, they were still standing there taking pictures of it, but I'm glad because now we get to see it and it gives us just a little more insight into what happened that day. Number two. This photo is of a man named Chris McCandless, who may be better known as Alex Supertramp. Chris was a traveler who inspired the book and movie Into the Wild, which were created to follow the story of his life, and more specifically his final great Alaskan adventure. This photo is unfortunately the last photo taken of Chris while he was on this Alaskan trip, and he ended up passing away in the wilderness. A lot of people have speculated that this photo was taken as his sort of goodbye. It is highly debated how he died, so there isn't quite a concrete answer of what exactly exactly happened to him. It is a very unfortunate end to such a young man's life, but he left quite a legacy. His story has inspired countless people and holds a special place in a lot of people's lives. He was a man who rejected conformity and materialism, and with his life and death he really left an important message for all of us to take a step back and remember what is really important. While the story has such a sad ending, there's also a lot of beautiful things that we can take from it. And in our number one spot today. This photo was taken by Fred Blackwell on May 28th, 1963, and is actually showing us a moment of protest. The three sitting at the counter are Joan Trumpor, Anne Moody, and their sociology teacher, John Salter. The reason why this photo is so important is because these three are sitting at a white-only counter at Woolworth's Five and Dime store in Jackson, Mississippi, while being assaulted by an angry mob. People are throwing condiments at them and I'm sure saying some pretty nasty things. The two students went to Tougaloo College, which was a black college that ended up being at the core of the civil rights movement in Mississippi. It's amazing to see how brave they are and a photo like this really is such an important message for us to remember today. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the Salem UFO. On the morning of July 16, 1952, this photo was captured by Shell Alpert and has stumped people ever since. The photo shows four unidentified objects hovering in the air above Salem, Massachusetts and was taken at the Salem Coast Guard Air Station. The objects seem to be above the Winter Island and Cat Cove areas, but there really isn't much more that is known about this strange incident. There are a few theories regarding this photo. One is a camera glitch, others think it may just be light reflecting off of the window that the photo was taken through, but of course there are people who point to similar incidents that happened in the 1950s, and of course believe it is proof of extraterrestrial beings. It is very likely we may never know exactly what's going on here, but the air of mystery it leaves is definitely kind of cool. In our ninth spot, we have Naked Prince Harry. Before Harry met Meghan, he was quite the wild royal and troublemaker. Back in 2012, naked photos of Harry partying up during his trip in Las Vegas got leaked online. Prince Harry was photographed playing a game of strip billiards with his friends in his VIP suite. In the photo, we see Harry holding his junk while a naked girl stands behind him holding him. In another photo, we see the backside of Harry with his arms wrapped around the naked girl. I wonder what the queen had to say when she saw these photos. Yikes. 
Coming in at number 8 we have Bill Clinton. It's no surprise that a number of high up powerful wealthy individuals had ties with Jeffrey Epstein, including Bill Clinton. If you don't know the whole Jeffrey Epstein scandal, I suggest you look into it, but it's hella dark and disturbing. He forced a number of young individuals into doing things with him and his friends and anyone else with a lot of money. It's believed that Bill knew what Jeffrey was doing and was a part of some of it. Here is a photo of Bill with one of Jeffrey's victims, Shantae Davies. When the photo was taken, Davies was only 22 years old. She is seen rubbing Clinton's shoulders while they all wait for their plane to Africa in 2002. Apparently it was Ghislaine Maxwell's idea for the young girl to help Bill out with his stiff back and give him a massage. Although Davies said that that's the most intimate that she got with Bill, it's still a very compromising photo of him. Having connections with Epstein in the first place tarnishes his reputation, one of the reasons why he has tried to bury this part of his past. Moving on at number 7 we have Topless Mark Zuckerberg. Okay, well seeing a guy topless is nothing scandalous, but a picture of Mark Zuckerberg, the CEO of Facebook shirtless? Well apparently Mark was really embarrassed when this photo got leaked, and his co-worker that leaked it accidentally got in trouble. Let's take a look at this photo, shall we? Sorry, Mark. This photo was taken at some weird private party. Shirtless Mark is surrounded by a number of other shirtless dudes. Like I said, it's not even a bad photo, but Mark was not happy about it going around. Apparently, it was accidentally posted by Facebook's director of engineering, Andrew Bosworth. As soon as he realized it had been leaked, he took it down immediately, but the internet was too fast and screenshotted it. In our sixth spot, we have the Bohemian Grove. The Bohemian Grove is a secret and controversial club that meets in the California woods every year. The club consists of a number of rich men. Among the attendees are past and present presidents, government members, and business leaders. It's kept very hush hush. What happens at this retreat thing stays there. Some say it's a cult, where they do human sacrifices among other illegal and spooky things. But since no one has yet infiltrated the club, we still don't really know what goes on there. But there are some photos that have gotten leaked, like pictures of a number of the men in weird cloaks surrounding a burning effigy, to pictures of some of the members seated around a huge dining table. Since this club is so controversial, I doubt the members want their pictures from the club leaked. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with Mark Zuckerberg surfing. I'm pretty sure you all have seen this photo of Mark surfing in Hawaii. It became a viral photo and a meme. Why? Well, because Mark has way too much sunscreen on his face. He really packed that on all over his face and it left a very noticeable white cast. I mean, good for him for taking sun safety seriously and, you know, skin cancer is no joke. But due to the fact that he became a laughing stock over the photo, I bet he didn't want anyone seeing those photos in the first place. Plus, it kind of ruins his reputation. Like, it's hard to take him seriously with that photo floating around and all the jokes associated with it. Coming in at number four, we have Kate Middleton's topless pictures. Looks like Harry isn't the only one in the royal family to stir up some controversy. Back in 2012, Kate and William were in France vacationing when the paparazzi took some photos of the pair. In the photos, Kate was sun tanning and she was topless. The paparazzi then sold the photos to the French magazine Closer, who then published them. Obviously, she and the rest of the royal family were horrified and took legal action. In the end, the magazine company had to pay 100,000 euros in damages for publishing the photos. And two staff members were fined an additional 90,000 euros to pay to Kate Middleton and Prince William. Pretty sure every copy of this photo has been destroyed. And for Kate's sake and privacy, let's hope it stays that way. In our third spot, we have Barack Obama's party. I didn't know Barack Obama was a big partier, but these photos prove otherwise. Just this year, Barack Obama threw a huge birthday bash for his 60th birthday, but it caused quite the uproar. Why? Well, photos from that night show a room packed full of maskless people in the middle of the pandemic. Especially since Barack is a huge political figure, you would think that he would set a good example, or at least practice what he's been preaching. Either way, Obama was under fire after photos of him dancing at this epic party were posted. In our second spot, we have Prince Harry's inappropriate costume. Prince Harry was quite the royal troublemaker back in the day, making headlines with a number of scandals. Well, back in 2005, Harry was seen dressed up in a...
Navy soldier uniform while attending a costume party. The costume consisted of wearing a red Nazi insignia on his left arm. Here are some of the photos from that night. Not only that, but he was photographed drinking and smoking in the outfit, which looks really freaking bad on the royal family. In the end, Prince Harry did apologize, saying, and I quote, I am very sorry if I caused any offense or embarrassment to anyone. It was a poor choice of costume, and I apologize. Let's just say that this is definitely one picture that Harry certainly wants to leave in the past. And in our number one spot today, we have Bill Gates. Bill Gates is another wealthy man who had ties with Jeffrey Epstein. Photographed here is a picture of the two at Jeffrey's Manhattan mansion in 2011. Over the years, Bill has denied his relationship with Jeffrey, but the two were friendlier than he likes to admit. Apparently, the first time they met was in 2011 after Epstein pleaded guilty to some of his crimes. But that didn't stop Bill from becoming close with him. He then proceeded to hang out with him on a number of different occasions. He went to Epstein's Manhattan town at least three times, one of those times being late at night. What were you doing there, Bill? So late, huh? He also flew on Epstein's plane a couple of times. In 2019, Gates said, and I quote, I met him. I didn't have any business relationship or friendship with him. Which clearly wasn't the truth because they met repeatedly. But anyways, it seems like Bill doesn't want anyone to see any photos that he has with Jeffrey. He doesn't want to get roped into the legal and disturbing things that Epstein was into. All right, starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the reflecting pool. This is one of the creepiest or most chilling images ever taken. It depicts a young girl in a graveyard who is looking down at her reflection in a pond. Okay, maybe a little eerie, but not exactly chilling. What really makes this photo what it is, however, is that there are seemingly two different reflections looking back up at the little girl. No one knows who this girl is, where she is, or when this photo was taken, but it is estimated to have come from somewhere around the early 1900s. This photo was analyzed, and it has been said that it is unaltered or edited. Who knows how this photo was possible? Maybe there was some sort of invisible entity standing beside her that we could only see the reflection of, like a reverse vampire or something. In our ninth spot, we have the alien craft. What I'm about to show you is a leaked video and some photos from Area 51 of an alien spacecraft test. The video features a flying object hovering in the sky and moving in ways that other crafts definitely don't do. This was recorded on May 15, 2017 and then was leaked years later. If this isn't actually a UFO, then what could it be? That's what's baffling people. The way it just moves up and down and side to side that quickly is very strange, especially because of its size. What do you think though? Is this proof that Area 51 has gotten their hands on an alien spacecraft? Moving on to number 8, we have the transportation of a UFO. When this next photo was leaked online, it was met with a number of conspiracy theories. So this is the image of the CIA transporting a large part for one of their top secret projects. In fact, when this was getting transported, the CIA sealed off the entire highway. And I'm sure you can see why this was met with a number of conspiracy theories. Like look at the shape of the thing that they're transporting. That is definitely a UFO or part of a UFO spaceship. Now this is where it gets even more interesting. Somehow a group of bikers made it onto the road. When they were stopped by some soldiers, they asked what they were transporting. And the soldier said they found a UFO up in the mountains. Now apparently he said this jokingly, but who knows? In our seventh spot we have the Tic Tac UFO. Last year, another UFO was spotted near Area 51. This one was given the name the Tic Tac UFO because of its Tic Tac shape and white or bright appearance. So this spacecraft was caught on footage by a person driving along near Area 51. He was driving along the extraterrestrial highway. That's the name given to the highway in Nevada, as a number of UFOs have been seen by drivers while on this route. At first, the driver thought that what he was seeing was just a cloud. When he got closer to it, he realized that it was definitely a craft of some kind. Later on, alien hunter Scott Waring confirmed that the UFO was in fact alien in origin. Also, the area in which he was driving through had a number of wind farms in the area. Turns out that in the past, a lot of UFOs have been spotted around wind farms, and one UFO even crashed into a windmill many years back. Some say this is because aliens are fascinated with human technology. In our sixth spot, we have Stephen Barron. 
In 2016, UFO hunter Steve Barron captured video and photographic evidence of another alien spacecraft close to Area 51. These were taken near his home in Las Vegas, Nevada, an hour drive from Area 51. Using a night vision camera, Steve head out to Red Rock Canyon to try and capture a UFO. The first couple of hours, there was nothing. Then he saw mysterious weird flashing lights appear over a mountain. He said this in regards to the UFO and its lights and I quote, first one, then two, then more and more. They put on a spectacular show. I am glad I was patient because the show they put on kept getting better and better. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the CIA spy plane. In 2011, Los Angeles Times journalist Annie Jacobson published a book called Area 51, an uncensored history of America's top secret military base. In the book, she included a number of never before seen photos of the base. The first one I want to show you is of a CIA spy plane. This photo shows an A-12 ox cart hidden behind a barrier at Area 51. This was a top secret plane that was created to reach high speeds and altitudes. During the first three years of testing this plane, everything was kept top secret. In fact, the pilots weren't even allowed to tell their wives what they were working on. On May 24th, 1963, during a test flight, the plane crashed. The pilot, Ken Collins, was fine but had to eject himself out of the plane. But afterwards, the CIA actually injected him with sodium pentothal, aka truth serum, to then interrogate him after the crash. That's crazy. In our fourth spot, we have the rare photo. So this photo was also featured in Annie Jacobson's book, Area 51, an uncensored history of America's top secret military base. In fact, this is a very rare photo that has never been published before. It was published for the first time in Annie's book, and that's it. This photo is an aerial view of Area 51 taken in 1964. I don't know why it was kept a secret for so long or how Annie got her hands on it, but she did and decided to share it with the world. Moving on at number three, we have the early U-2 spy planes. In the early 1950s, at the peak of the Cold War, the CIA began to develop planes that they wanted to reach an altitude of 70,000 feet to avoid detection against Soviet radar. This gave birth to the U-2 spy planes that you see here in this picture. This photo was taken in Area 51 in 1956 and pictures a worker standing on the plane's wing. Sadly, at least three pilots lost their lives during test flights, including two at Area 51 and one at an Air Force base in Germany. Coming in at number two, we have Boyd Bushman. Shortly before his death, former Area 51 engineer Boyd Bushman revealed that he encountered aliens while working at Area 51. In a video, Bushman shows a number of mysterious photos to the camera, including one of an alien and a number of photos of the alien's appendages. We have a total of at least 18 that exist and operate with our facility. Now, many people believe that this man is telling the truth. Why? Because he had nothing to gain or lose by sharing his story. Plus, an interrogator with the police studied Boyd's movements and speech pattern during this interview and he said that it appears as if he's telling the truth. In the interview, he said that Area 51 has at least 18 of these aliens in their facility. He also claims that there are two groups of aliens. One group are called the Wranglers, the others are called the Rustlers. The aliens that are considered Wranglers are friendly and have a better relationship with humans. Rustlers, however, have been known to steal cattle. This is all insane. And in our number one spot today, we have Boyd Bushman and the UFO. During his interview, Boyd Bushman also revealed photos of real UFO spacecrafts that he saw while working at Area 51. Up close and personal, this is a UFO which is ready to take off. So that's a close-up photo of a UFO spacecraft taking off. Then he also showed a different photo of a UFO spacecraft with its lights turned off. 